All right, so we're in Malta. We're gonna head to Rabat. There's a sign there. So this is the um, Ir Rabat. This is the road that comes up here. And um, we're gonna look for a Patera. It's in uh, Cheeseman's Crepery. Right, shout out for Cheeseman's. Um, and this is one of the hottest days of the hottest December day in 60 years, I think it is, or something like that, yeah? So we're gonna flip around the camera now. I don't know how to flip around the camera. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> continuation then so we're still traveling towards the Fatira. Um, I had to like stop the previous um, little footage because I didn't know how to turn the um, camera around to face us. Mm. There we go. So we'll um, should get there in the next 20 minutes or so and then we'll do a bit more filming and show you what the Fatira is all about. What, what the popular Maltese tira is all about. And then on the other side, we've got, we say about the Begila? Yeah, the Begila is, is um, it's a traditional uh, bean paste, I would call it. Um, it's basically got some herbs, beans, oh, olive oil. It, using it. That's right. Yes, olive oil, um, that's it basically. It's very traditional. And they, the, uh, what's that called? What's that? That's Ar arioli. That's arioli. made out of um, herbs, garlic, um, and mashed bread. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll see the uh, potato soup. He's getting the salad for it now. This is the shop. Let's go back a bit. You can see it all. It's a really cool shop. Very really nice as well. Nice. We're going to show them oh, what yeah. it looks like. Okay. There's two. So there's one which is a vegan one. Yeah. Which isn't that one. <laughs> and there's one that's the tuna one. Yeah. Right on, that way around. So we've asked for extra tomatoes because mm. yeah. sometimes it, sometimes it's a little bit dry. Yeah. Um, but the extra tomatoes like just makes it perfect. And this one is the best one that that there is on the island. I've, Tuna. I've tried many different ones, but this one is by far the best one. Now it's been okay, heated so, up, so yeah. he puts the filling. So Mr. Cheeseman, Chesman, <laughs> he puts the, um, the filling in, and then he um, puts it into a grill like a Spanish plancha. Which yeah, you you up. have to lift it up. Yeah, you have to show it like that. It's really so this is really the tuna nice. one. So it's um, there's only oh, well, two pieces to it, but he's cut it in half. Yeah, I try and show them the. The giggler in there, tomatoes, salad. I try and show and them mine. Thin layer of tuna. In full, so that maybe. In full, for the shape? Yeah, for the shape, that's right. He's putting in half those all though. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. There it is. That's the Maltese Tira for you guys. And it's very, very Possession. good. It's very yummy. All is everything there. Papers. We're very famous here for our breads, um, and this is a particular bread. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've missed it. You, you love the thing. No, I had this in months. <laughs> yeah. The last time we went, it was closed. It was, uh -huh. it was on a holiday. The time yeah. before that, he was cleaning his garage out. Yeah. So, she phoned up today to check, mm -hmm. make sure it was open. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't want to risk it because you got so disappointed last time. And the, the you amount were of so strike, disappointed. The amount of strikes or people on strike in England right now. 
There's a possibility I won't even made it. So it's nice to be here. Took a long time to get here. Yeah. So um I take care of the bookings for the flights and what have you. And when he was already on his way to the airport, I received a message that said, which I never do from from Ryanair, that, that was the airline, that said, um, expect possible cancellations or major delays. And I was like, oh no. Because of the weather conditions, basically, not because of the strikes, though. Last night it went to what temperatures? Minus 10. I mean, that's... So I was in the airport last night, minus 10 degrees. <clears throat> um, and there wasn't anywhere which was warm. There was mm -hmm. somewhere which was, like, okay-ish. And that's with three t-shirts, a jumper, a coat on woolly hat and gloves inside inside the terminal you are mm -hmm. still cold inside the terminal no more than five degrees inside I think no. so the bread as you toasted it it's got this little very thin crispiness to it mm -hmm. um, the dough it doesn't taste strong of yeast at all no um yeah it's got like quite a lot of air bubbles in it and it's um cooked in a very very um hot oven so mm -hmm. probably probably about 280 or something like that maybe but really hot i think probably they're very particular ovens that make the maltese bread um and unfortunately there's only a few left on the maltese island there aren't there aren't too many because that trade of Maltese baking the proper Maltese bread is unfortunately dying out. It's a big misfortune that. How's yours? Mm. Good. What's yours, big eagle? Which is a broad bean paste. Yeah, it's big eagle, um, tomatoes, uh, olives. Lettuce, just veggies. That other one you said, the Aroli, uh, Aro. mm. what's that called again? How do you pronounce it? It's A J I. Arioli. Oh. <laughs> Arioli is like a, um, once again, trad I believe it's only a Malta, but a traditional paste. It's usually eaten beside, you're not gonna like this, well, I used to, I don't anymore. You eat it with snails. Which I, no, I don't want to eat that. Yeah, I know. But on <coughs> its own, alioli is really good. It's, it's, a, it's a bread paste, sort of, made of bread. Um, has some tomato sauce in it, um, herbs, olive oil, garlic. That's it. Really good as well. There's um, a famous frittura, it's like a frittura pizza type thing, isn't it, in Gozo? Mm -hmm. And we were looking forward to that. Because we're like, we had this thinking, and when we had this thought, this is the best frittura we've ever had. Well, yeah. was, was it my first frittura? But it was the best one that you ever had, and mm -hmm. I tried to like go to other places and try them. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm oh, sorry. Anyway, so um, nowhere near. Um, and then the neighbor said, Oh, this is like really famous one in Gozo, like a potato pizza. So the same ingredients, but yeah. on a flatbread. Um, and we tried that, and it was nowhere near as good as this. So the balance of flavors in this one is really good. Yeah, yeah. And how much was the meal? Six euros? Seven? Yeah, six euros for two people. He has the best flavor, not just in price, in taste mainly. Um, 
because all the majority of the tiras that I've seen you buy for four euros or five euros or even five fifty and six I've seen but this is two fifty <laughs> which is ridiculous when you consider all the ingredients mm -hmm. especially the, maybe mine would get by because it's only veggies but yours has got the tiger I mean it's got a bit of tuna in it <laughs> it's got the bagheel I mean the bagheel paste to, if you wanted to make the sandwich yourself the bagheel paste is about one euro fifty isn't it Cheap percent, but say two euros for big healer. Then um, probably more, babe. Yeah, and all the other separate ingredients as well. You couldn't make it. It's cheaper to buy it. Uh huh. So this is a stop we go to every time he comes to Malta. He has to. You always have to. I love it, yeah. <clears throat> so it's an appointment we make. And um, the shop owner has gotten used to us. <laughs> now, a couple of days ago, I made vegan toad in the hole. Mm. Um, I'm going to try and recreate that in Malta. It's going to cost a downside more in Malta than it did in England. So in England, the whole meal cost me 750, 250, three pounds. We're going to see how much it costs in Malta, but it's that would be around four, four, four fifty euros, maybe. Yeah. Not more. You don't find those prices here. You don't get bargains on food. That's all. So in England there's a shop in, I don't know if it's everywhere, it's, um, it's in the north of England anyway, and in Leeds. And it's called Heron Foods. And yeah. they do things with short life expectancy on them or things which uh, aren't selling very well in another supermarket, but because of that, mm -hmm. they get a lot of vegan food, or they get different sorts of tofu, which is like smoked flavour that somebody might not bother buying, so they get loads of that. And a packet of tofu mm -hmm. might be like three packs of tofu for a pound, but the same brand you go to Waitrose, they're two fifty three pounds each. Um, and then the the vegan sausages that was a pound, I think. And that was they were nice. Um, yeah, Yorkshire pudding. You get so many, so many bargains. Yeah, yeah. you can eat like England. a king for you know. If you spent five pounds on a meal and you went to the right places, mm -hmm. you could actually do a you know a very very high standard meal. But here you get you want to get a block of cheese oh. for that. This is so good. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm on my second one as well. Uh, I've only got that left. They're really quite big. Um, they're filling. Very filling. Yeah, it's about one and a half times the size of my hand. Mm -hmm. That's going inside my face. That's, that's mm. a lot of food. Yeah, but, but in England... Um, <clears throat> Like Bernadette always sees the price of the food and stuff and she thinks, oh yeah, they're being conned a bit over here. Yeah. But in respect though, it's like I look at fuel prices over here. So, she's got, she got solar panels and because she's got solar panels and the gas is in a bottle thing. So literally yeah. your fuel is, well, that's your, you're making money probably on it, but, but you don't spend more than £15, maybe £30 on gas a year. Um, just a minute. What? When he mentions fuel, it doesn't mean car fuel. It means the electricity and all, what, all the stuff to, to keep your house cool or warm. Um, yeah, but the solar panels. Um, but still, even if I didn't have the solar panels, 
um, my electricity bill would be a lot cheaper than yours. Mm -hmm. How much is it costing you to warm the house right now? <clears throat> because many British are saying this winter it's eat or heat. It's more than ten pounds a day. More than ten pounds a day. So um, a on lot. a very cold day, which it was like last last two weeks, um, looking at twelve to fifteen pounds a day. And that's not toasted warm. That's like you know eighteen, nineteen degrees a house off. You know. Not like a higher 20s or something. You know? And then you got, there's onions in that. I, I'll tell them the onions. But those are not raw onions. Those They're are pickled. pickled. Yeah, I told him okay. He asked me. Okay. It's not good you gas though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but Was they're it? pickled. They taste nice. Yeah, I was eating loads of them. <laughs> Have you got them? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't have loads. I'm on the last bit. God, you're doing well as well, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's like the best meal, you know? It's cheap, but the thing is, we went to the... So, when we was closed last, we went to the um, mm -hmm. huh. little cafe for place up the road. Yeah. Uh, we asked for it toasted, they didn't do it. The ingredients were just too dry, wasn't it? They needed extra yeah. tomatoes. Yeah, and um, they wanted two, two euros for the extra oh, tomatoes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for, for like two pieces of sun-dried tomatoes was two euros mm -hmm. if, they wanted, if they wanted to put it in. Mm -hmm. It was already, was it six? About six or five euros. Mm. Five fifty. Mm. Mm. It's it, this is something so traditional that you can't just buy it from any restaurant or any shop. And from where we buy it, he's he's been doing it all his life. He gets the bread um, from a particular bakery in Ormi. Now Ormi is a village in Malta that's full of these um, specialized ovens for the Maltese bread. If you really want to get proper, tasty bread, you you, you go on army. You, you're done. Well, you're not, you're not far off. <coughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. I needed that though. That's been, it's been a long time since I've <laughs> Yeah, it's sunny today as well. Tell them about the weather today. Twen 22 degrees. Did you, did you mention it? Yeah, I did before. But I don't know what, what when you edit it, you might take it out. And I don't know what do. Anyway. Aww. Yeah, right. Um, What's that bit? I don't know. I think it's big enough. Mm. It's a spicy bit. Oh, it's 22 degrees, which is the warmest... December day um, in 60 years, and it feels yeah, it feels like something's nice. It's a perfect. Um, well, I left the house. It wasn't 22; it was 23. So it's even higher. Breaking news. Hmm. Breaking news. One yeah. degree higher. Yeah. For the time of year, it's pretty high. Mm -hmm. I'm tired from the traveling. All right. <laughs> You're not even on camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you still... That's the point of it, the only thing you eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got two t-shirts on. Go on. Because he loves his ptira so much that we... We came straight here from the airport. You didn't mention that. Yeah, basically, put me up from the airport. Like, we're off to Cheeseman's Crepery. <laughs> oh, get that. I did hug you, though. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, let's go to Cheeseman's. You better hug me. Yeah, it was good. 
<laughs> you enjoyed it. I mean, the potato was good, I knew it was good as well. Everything was good. <laughs> it was, um, that was nice, that was, wasn't it? Six euros. That's including a drink. Go down there. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Does that mean everyone's gonna, is everyone going to go there now and we won't be able to get a seat? No. Not everyone's going to go there at the same time. We might get affetters for free if for thousands of people. And to be fair, it's more like, a, although we can sit in the shop, he has a couple of tables. Yeah. But it's very, it's not really a restaurant. It's not a restaurant. Yeah. It's like a takeaway bar, sort of. Yeah, but you got, you got um, Rabat to walk around. You've got the little gardens over the road. And you've got Medina as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You've got quite a lot going on in the local. So that's it for today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this mukbang, which was mukbang? pretty diff we different. One? Yeah, we might do another one. We'll see. We have a number of videos to do. Okay. Um, but uh, this was different because the Maltese tira is very, very particular. And um, I really love to promote it. I think I have to check. I'm not sure about what I was going to say, so... <laughs> you have to mean, check something. Nothing, forget it. <laughs> the Fetera place? The bread? No, 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 no. no but the bread. We're, I'm very proud of the Maltese Fetera. Because it is very particular and you really don't find anything like that anywhere else. So, I hope you enjoy that and I hope it will encourage you to... Whenever you visit the Maltese Islands, you stop by. Uh, any shop and try and get the, your hands on the, on the traditional tira. If you go to Rabat, go to Cheesemans because, as I said, the best one on the island. Thank you for watching and until the next one, bye!